This video is sponsored by Kundu Network Solutions. You can purchase Unify High Speed Internet Connections Android TV Box, reconditioned and brand new laptops at a reasonable price. Your end promotions are going on, so check out the link in the description for more info. In my previous video about 7 months ago, I reviewed my daily driver, that is Asus ROG Strix G15. Today I will try to go deep inside of this beautiful machine. I am going to tear down this laptop and discover the main components as well as the upgradability options. This is Pritham from Infotainer Games and let's get started. Before starting the tear down, let's see what we have to upgrade. I am going to install Transcend 8GB DDR4 RAM with 3200MHz bus speed. Though 10th generation Core i5 supports 2933MHz, but it's good to use higher bus speed RAM. We also have a SSD to upgrade. This is Walton Antique 256GB NVMe SSD with DRAM cache. Though we could go for higher variant, but due to price hike, we found this suitable. Also need to mention that this is the cheapest SSD we found in the market with DRAM cache. And this is a product from a Bangladeshi company. Before opening the back part, there are some cautions for you. If there is any void sticker on any screw of your laptop, don't break that, you will lose your warranty. Also, if you don't know about the inner components, don't try to do it by yourself. Take help from experts or go to customer care point. They will provide you free service and also they will take the responsibility for any type of damage. My laptop has a white sticker on motherboard and that's why I am attempting this. After unscrewing, we should use visiting cards or guitar picks to remove the back shell. Put the pick between the two edges and apply gentle pressure to detach the clip points. There are two flat cables connected with the main motherboard. These are for the RGB lighting at the bottom edge of the laptop. Unplug the connectors and remove this gently. Here comes the inner view of my laptop. You can see a beautiful red printed circuit board with lots of components soldered on that. Let's introduce some basic parts. You can see there are two fans here connected with copper heat pipes. When your processor heats up to 70 to 80 degrees Celsius, these fans cools them down as much as they can. We will find the processor here attached with the heat pipe and the GPU stays here. This is the void sticker about which I was talking before. Should not be removed. You will lose your warranty if you try to do that. This is the 8GB Samsung RAM built in. And there is another slot to upgrade. This laptop supports two 16GB, that is 32GB RAM in total. But for now, I will upgrade to 16 GB. At first, we need to unplug the battery. This is really important to avoid any short circuit or damage. Open the connector clips and remove those connectors gently. I have unplugged the system RAM to clean. I am using this machine for a year and it becomes so dirty using air blower and paintbrush to clean it properly. Here comes the RAM, which I will install. It's recommended to use both sticks of same company, but if you can't afford, make sure both of the RAMs has same rank. Both of my RAMs are of 1 rank by 8. Place the RAM in 45 degree with the slot and match the groove. Press gently to the other part and you are done. Now let's check the SSD. 
This is Intel 512GB PCI Gen 3 NVMe SSD with heatsink pre-installed. Below that, here is the Wi-Fi network card. This supports Wi-Fi 6. If necessary, we can swap the card in future. This is the SSD we are going to install along with Intel. I will apply thermal pads on these SSDs. This will help for better heat dissipation and better performance. We will check that later on benchmarking section. Generally, thermal pads are placed between heatsink and SSD. But the built-in SSD comes with fixed heatsink. So I have to place the pad on top of that. Added a rubber band for holding the pad in place and placing it carefully to the slot. Now, this laptop has two empty slots to upgrade. Each of them supports up to 1TB. After placing the thermal pad between heatsink and SSD, I have tightened them with rubber bands. Now it's time to place in a slot. Finally, my works are done. Blowing the dust for the last time. Let's see how the system looks now. Reconnecting the battery and RGB cables, we will screw up the back shell of the laptop. Let's see the results after upgrading. At first, I have to initialize new SSD. Here we are getting 238GB of free space from a 256GB SSD. Here we can see both RAMs are installed. It's better to use a dual channel RAM configuration than a single channel. For example, if you want to install 16GB RAM, always use 28GB sticks instead of 116GB stick. This will provide you 20% better performance. Now, the benchmark time. I'm using Crystal Disk Mark as benchmarking tool in a 10th generation Core i5 system with NVIDIA GTX 1650 Ti GPU. For the built-in Intel SSD, which comes with QLC cells, we are getting maximum read speed up to 1500 Mbps and read speed up to 930 Mbps. During the test, the maximum temperature of the SSD was 45 degrees Celsius. But after placing a thermal pad, its temperature went down to 42 degrees Celsius and read speed slightly increased. Though the temperature decreased slightly, but if we could place the pad properly, it would be more effective. Now, for the Walton 256GB SSD, we found the maximum read speed up to 3250 Mbps, whereas the write speed is 1330 Mbps. During the test, the maximum temperature was up to 40 degrees Celsius, though in normal situation it heats up to 25 degrees Celsius. Even at the time of copying a large file, the Walton SSD with TLC cells performed pretty well than Intel SSD. Probably its DRAM cache is responsible, but let's see how long it lasts. To check the RAM performance, we need to run a game. I have played Forza Horizon 5 before and after installing the RAM. With 8GB RAM, I had to play in lower graphics settings and there was continuous drops in frame rates. But after installing the RAM, the game is running smoothly in medium and higher settings. Undoubtedly, we are getting more free memory than previous, which is helping for better FPS. So that's it for today. I have tried to share every possible information on upgrading a laptop. Hope this will be informative to you. Don't forget to like and share and leave your comments down below. This is Pritam signing off for today and see you in the next one.